revival. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you continue to do. Thank you for the miracles we will see. Thank you for the signs and wonders for the lives that will be transformed because of you. Give you thanks and praise for it now. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Tim, again, as always, for opening. He's already left. Praise the Lord. Uh, but thank you. I'm grateful to him for coming even with the uh, with the little ones and, and helping out. Praise the Lord. And uh, Suzanne and Jody, Peter, and Mike, thank you for live worship again. That's nice. Praise the Lord. It was good to have that again. Hallelujah. Appreciate that. And we appreciate all of you that are joining us on Facebook and uh, over the Internet. We're grateful to have you a part of the service this morning. And it's good to have Darlene back in our physical presence. Praise the Lord. It's great to see her again. God bless you. Darlene, you have anything you want to share? Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. We appreciate Darlene, part of this uh, church ever since its inception. And uh, amen. Still a part today. It's going strong. And uh, amen. Carrying it to Arizona. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Surprise, surprise. Praise the Lord. Happens to be the town. Happens to be the town. But yes, yeah, I know. I know. Praise the Lord. In fact, we do have a, a gentleman from uh, Pakistan. Brother Urban, I believe his name is. Brother Urban, God bless you. Appreciate you if you're with us this morning. If you're not, bless you anyway. Praise the Lord. But all of you that are with us on Facebook, we appreciate you uh, being a part of the service and uh, participating and uh, helping us to encounter the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God is good, and uh, we're excited about what he's doing in these days. And uh, let's just... I don't know if there's anything else. Seems like there's something I'm supposed to do, but I'm not doing it. Praise the Lord, which is not unusual. This is that's kind of normal, but anyway, Hallelujah. If I think of it, I'll I'll do it later. Hallelujah. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. I want to read verses one through four. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. The darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Praise the Lord. You know, so God's light is the light of creation. We see it all throughout the scriptures from Genesis all the way through to Revelation. And that word is... Uh, uh, or in uh, Hebrew, and that's where we get the word aura from. And uh, it says that he saw that it was good. That word is tov, T-O-V, which means perfect. But it also actually, uh, the literal definition would be to complete its purpose or fulfill the purpose is what that word, when, we, when God's saying that's good, what he's saying is it did what it's supposed to do. It's, it's completed the purpose, right? So he, and then it says that he divided uh, the light from the darkness. Now we have a tendency to think of darkness as being evil. It's not innately evil or God couldn't have created it. But there is such a thing, and I'm not going to get into the science of it because it's way over my head, but I'm just going to say this much about it. When God created, we can think, well, he just waved his hand and magically all of a sudden there was this beautiful earth. He was working with physics. He, he was creating atoms. He was creating all sorts of things that, were, that we still have in this universe to this day. Now, between atoms is what is called darkness or ma dark mass. Yeah. That's a reality. It's still with us today, and that's what, that's what this darkness is that it talks about he divided. So he didn't create evil. That, the word for that uh, evil is uh, ra, and uh, that's, that's not what he created. And actually, even that, we have, a, this, we have this concept of, uh, of evil and, 
you know, dark and light and, and that it's just, you know, s simply one or the other. Amen. And the truth is, darkness is not innately evil. And it's not because I said God created it. But darkness is the absence of light. So what darkness is, is not fulfilling its purpose. I'm talking about in the literal sense here. Of course, it's, it's fulfilling its purpose in terms of the dark mass because it's what separates the atoms. But I'm talking about in terms of human understanding and how we relate to it. So dark, just because something's dark doesn't make it evil. It's just not fulfilling the purpose of being light. Making any sense here at all? Amen. I, I'm, I'll try to get to this. So the first thing, and Tim mentioned this, is God. In the beginning, God. Actually, before the beginning. It's just God and then whatever. It's always that way. It always has been that way. And it always will be that way. So Elohim, and that is, uh, he has to be first. Elohim is a, uh, it's a plural. And you can think of it like when he created Adam, he created them, Adam. Initially, it was Adam and Eve, but it was, they were both in Adam. That's, what, that's the idea behind Elohim is everything is in God. He's, and, and the fact that there is male, female in God, yep. right, just as there is, and that's why he divided man, and we got people still trying to get, right. yeah. can't right. quite figure this out. God had a pretty good plan when he yes. did it the way he did it, so, you know, you might want to just leave well enough alone. But nevertheless, I'm just saying, that's what God was doing. Woman was in man, right. just as God is not male or female, Right. And so he separated that so that there would be a way for Adam to express love. The same thing that God was doing when he created humans. God is love, but he wanted to be able to express that love. And, he, and it had to be to uh, uh, something that, that could receive it or reject it, that could respond to it. Angels, he doesn't love angels. They work for him. They're, they're, they're like military. You don't love them. They, they just, they're just there, and they're doing what they're, what they're to do, right? So God is the source, and, and, uh, and here's the deal. He's, he's the source, and he spoke. Yes. Yeah. Now, we are created in his image. Yes. Amen. We're created in the image of God, and we are to use words yes. the same way God uses words. Yes. Amen. We have to realize when we speak... Again, I'm getting off. I'm getting into some stuff here, but I'm just saying we are, we've talked about this years ago. We talked about the fr light and frequencies and how you know how does uh, an object know if uh, if if how do we know if it exists or not? Does it exist in a particle or in a wave? It exists in whatever way we perceive it to exist. Science has already proven that. One may see it as a solid. One may see it as a wave. Whichever way I see it, perceive it, that's the way that it is. Right. Now, you may be looking at the same thing, and it can be an object or a solid to you or a square or, or a uh, you know, molecular uh, in a circle. But for me, it's in a way because that's the way I perceive it. So in other words, I, we have power over this universe that we're not even aware yes. of. It's just it's how we perceive yes. that things are. Yes. We have this great power because that's the way God created us. And so what we, how we perceive is how we would then speak. That's why Jesus said it's more important what comes out of your mouth than what goes into it. In other words, you have the ability to change what's coming in, but what comes out, once it comes out, it's a, it's a done deal. It's established, all right? So we have to realize when we speak, we're using the frequency of light. And why? To create matter. And that's why God says, whatever you say, that's what you're going to get. Amen. He said, if you want... You know, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast down or moved out of the way, it'll do it because you're speaking at the frequency of light the same as God did. And that will create matter. It will move matter. It will create matter. Amen. You can say amen or not, but that's the truth. That's that is scientific fact. 
And if we were to take the time and had the ability and the, the intellect, we could break down the very creation into a scientific experiment that went perfectly correct. Because God was before everything. If there's science, he created what is now our science. Yes. So when science gets screwed up, it's not God's science, it's man's science. Yes. Amen. So Adam was created as a being of light. Yes. Amen. But he fell into darkness. Yes. Why? Because he did not fulfill his purpose. Jesus. He didn't do good. God said, light be. And it was. And then he divided the light from the darkness in the end of the first day. And he said, it's good. Light's good. Because it fulfilled its purpose. Yes. Right? Yep. Darkness is not necessarily evil. It's just not fulfilling the purpose. That's why it's dark. And when Adam did not fulfill his purpose in God, what God created him for, darkness came. Amen. Let's look at this again. Genesis chapter 1, 1 through 4. And I'm saying all this because of where I'm going. I don't want you to think that I'm telling you I'm giving you rules or I'm giving you laws. I'm, telling, I'm trying to get us to understand we have a purpose. Yes. And in that purpose, there is a way to be. And if we miss that purpose, we're in darkness. In other words, we're not, co we're not fulfilling the purpose that God created us for. It's more than just sitting here waiting for the rapture. We all have a purpose. And I, I've heard it throughout the years, you know, and, and, you know, everybody has a calling. Everybody has a purpose. And your purpose, it's, it's, you may not understand what your purpose is. Everybody's purpose isn't to be a preacher, isn't to be a prophet, isn't to be a, you know, evangelist. Those are just some call, those are just callings. But everybody has a purpose in God. Yes. Yes. That's why we're here. Is so that he can perform his will or his desire or what his destiny for you is. That's your purpose. You, you don't have to necessarily know exactly what it is day to day, step by step. It's just to know that you have a purpose and the purpose is to stay in agreement with the word of God. So anyway, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and it was void and the darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Let's look at, uh, quickly at Exodus chapter 14 and verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went before their face and stood behind them. Now, everywhere they went, there was darkness on one side and light on the other. Yep. Praise the Lord. Yes. So the light was the purpose of the light was to give direction. Purpose, you could say, for Israel to fulfill their purpose, to get to the promised land. Amen. And the purpose of the darkness wasn't fulfilling a purpose. It was it was unfulfilled purpose because it was dark. Amen. Now, you can think, okay, well, see, you sound like you're contradicting yourself. But let me just say this. If you look at the, and I'm not going to go through all of it. I'll just give you one example. In uh, day two, God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. So he took what was water everywhere, right? And he divided it. He put water above, and he put water beneath the earth and on the earth, but just isolated areas, right? right. Well, then you think, okay, well, what's, what's the point? Well, obviously, you had to have space. You had to have, at some point, vegetation. You had to have a place to move around and, and to, to live and to eat yeah. and to so on and so forth. 
So, but there's a purpose to this beyond that. And we don't normally look at it, but if you get to uh, Noah's day, somewhere about a thousand years later, or thereabouts, what does God do? He does just the opposite. He brings it back to the way it was before the creation. He actually gives it purpose where it had no purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, it may have looked chaotic to the people who were obviously drowning and everything, but there was a purpose for it, and it was to bring God's ultimate purpose, which was a lineage that would eventually lead to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. I'm just saying what looks like to us inane, just kind of haphazard, random things. God's perfect purpose is in everything. It's in you. That same foreknowledge, that same genius, that same tov is in you as is in this creation, the earth itself. So that should tell us, or at least it does me, it's what I've been dealing with, is that that whatever the purpose is that God has for me, I want it. I want to do it. I want to have it. I'm not saying I understand it totally, and anybody that tells you they do is either lying or not very bright. (laughs) Because God knows so much more than any of us. Even though he reveals things to us, he doesn't always give us the whole picture. In fact, he rarely ever does because we would screw it up if we had too much information. So I don't worry about that. I just know that God has a purpose for my life. And as long as I try to stay aligned with his word, that purpose is going to come to pass in spite of anybody else, whatever they think, whatever they say, whatever they do. It doesn't, it is, it's irrelevant in terms of my purpose and what God's going to do with my life. And it's the same for every one of us if we would just cooperate. Amen. So we know that light is good, right? God used his word to call forth light. He did that at the very beginning of the creation. His word. Now the first key to overcoming chaos. How many of you know chaos? Praise the Lord. (laughs) If you don't, you will, because it's all around us. Amen. Hallelujah. And we've all gone through, you know, times of of chaos in our lives. And now we're living in a time where it seems to be trying to dominate everything. But what was it before God created the earth? Before light came, what was there? Chaos. There was confusion. There was a mess. Everything was null and void and messed up and screwed up, right? And so what did God do? He spoke. And the first key to overcoming chaos and restoring order is God's word. It's going back to the word of God, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Praise the Lord. We need to start speaking light again, just as God did. If we want to get rid of, if we want to create something, then we need to speak light. Light. And his word is light. So whatever we're needing, whatever it is we're wanting, whatever it is we feel we're lacking, it's by speaking in agreement with his word. I know we take this so, like, for granted. And we say so many dumb things. When I say we, I'm just speaking in general terms. You may, maybe you never do that. But, but, you know, we just don't realize the power of, that is in our words. We are creating something every time we open our mouth. We are creatures of light. We're either fulfilling a destiny or we're coming short of it. We're either producing light, which is good, or we're producing darkness, which is unfulfilled purpose. Your purpose isn't getting fulfilled. So when you're not speaking in agreement with God's word, you're speaking darkness. You're speaking an unfulfilled purpose. Instead of reaching your destiny, instead of experiencing your your, uh, fulfillment of your purpose, you're not. You're doing the opposite. I'm just trying to say this in a way that it makes it, 
makes us understand that it's important, it's critical that we, especially now in the time that we're living, listen, we, we were created for this time. We're not here accidentally or randomly. He chose us and all of the millions and millions of lives that have been created and, and brought into this world for us to be born at this particular time. Why? Because he has a purpose to fulfill and he's going to do it through us. Or anyone who will walk in that. Fo now think about this. People that are evil, people that we would say are evil. And I could just start listening them right now, praise the Lord, but I'm not going to. What they really are is broken. Why? Because they don't know the word. They don't have the word in them. They can't fulfill a purpose. So they're doing something that is anti-purpose, contrary to the purpose. And that's creating darkness. It's creating chaos. And that's why it's so important that we operate from the light. Because without us, chaos is going to prevail. Chaos is going to dominate everything until light comes right. to change or yes. manifest God yes. and His purpose. Yes. So it's important. It isn't just a gimmick. It isn't just a way of getting the new car or getting your house paid for. or getting. He I mean, all those things are important. I'm not saying that God doesn't want us to have them. I'm just saying they're just the things. They're not the kingdom. The kingdom is the purpose of God being fulfilled in this earth. And that's why, church, that's why we're here. We're not here for all. We think about all the other stuff, and it's good. He gives us all of that. But the reason for us being here, the purpose for us being here, is to bring light. To bring manifestation where there's chaos. Where there's confusion. Where there's evil darkness yes. hallelujah so we need the power we need wisdom we need power and we need the light of God's word to restore and to restrain to hold back yes. praise the Lord uh, Mark 5, uh, 1533 excuse me Mark 1533 When the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Now, this is fascinating. So, when Jesus was on the cross, darkness came. Right? Yeah. Like it was before he came. He was the word, right? Yeah. So, what was this all about? It went from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. It happened because Jesus, the word, had to return to the start of creation, to undo the darkness that Adam created. He had, and another, just another way of saying it is, he had to fulfill his purpose in order to undo the unfulfilled purpose of Adam. And if you think about it, that's what God's doing in our lives every time he comes either to heal us to prosper us, to give us revelation, to do whatever it is he's doing. He's coming to give us light, right? right. To fix the darkness yes. that we created yes. by not fulfilling our purpose, by not walking in the light as he is in the light. It's not about us being, you know, you know rigid and, and religious and all this stuff. I tried to say that last week and I'm just kind of talking the same stuff because God will not get this off me. You can think whatever you want to. I'm just telling you, I know what God is saying to me and that's why I'm sharing it. And it's not about you religious rules and you're going to get beat up and God's going to send you to hell. You are good. You are seated with him in heavenly places. This is about what we're going to do here on earth in order to bring the kingdom of God sooner rather than later. You don't have to do it. You're not going to go to hell, but you're going to be dealing with a hell of a lot of darkness yeah. in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. And this world needs your light yes. because you have a destiny. You have a purpose. And that purpose is that your light shines wherever you are because only you are going to be where you are. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. You. The young man in the hospital, Don, just think about you guys. What if you didn't know them? What if they didn't know you? Yeah. 
This isn't about an ego trip, and I know that would be the last thing you would ever say, but it's about your light shining in darkness. If your light didn't shine in that darkness, that boy would be dead. Yes. Because they, the darkness had already made their declaration. Yes. And unfulfilled, that, boy's unfu that boy's purpose would have been unfulfilled. And so would yours in that case. Now there's, a, now there's opportunity for his light to shine. Yes. You say, well, he's not perfect. He's, well, who is? Right. Doesn't mean he doesn't have a light. Doesn't mean he doesn't have a purpose. If he didn't have, he wouldn't have been created in the first place. He wouldn't have been put here. That's what's so hellish about abortion. Yes. Right. All of, think of the light. Think of the purpose of God, the destinies of God that are being ripped from this earth and stolen, amen, from humanity. Hallelujah. He had to undo the chaos that was, that was the result of the fall. Praise the Lord. So through the cross, he conquered the chaos. The chaos that was caused by our sin. He brought light because of our darkness. And he overcame those forces of darkness. Yes. Praise the Lord. Colossians 2.15. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. A battle. Yes. Yeah. But it really wasn't much of a battle. No. Jesus just slapped them around, yep. knocked them down, stripped them, took their weapons away from them, kicked them in the head, yep. and then humiliated them in front of the uh, in front of one another. Yes. Amen. Well, speaking of battles, uh, you remember? Think about this. Jacob's Jacob. He wrestles. He battles yeah. with this angel, or some say God, a manifestation of God. And he wrestles with him all night long, right? Let's just go Genesis chapter 32, uh, 24 and 25. Genesis 32, 24 and 25. See, the th one of the things we have to do is we got to read this as though it's talking about us mm -hmm. instead of just giving us, you know, biographies and so forth of other people. God's telling us these, these are things about you. These are analogies of you, of your life. These are your, your potentials. These are, these are really you just with a different name in a different time. So Jacob was left alone and he, there he wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. How, you ever, anybody yeah. ever wrestle, you know, kind of like you're wrestling with God and saying, God, I need to know, I, I've got to have an answer. I've got to I got to know that you're with me in this thing. I got to know that you're that you're working with me and that, that I'm not I haven't screwed this up so much that I think I'm talking to you and I'm talking to the devil or I've got some other weird stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we've done that. So everybody I think all Christians if you have you know you're struggling because look I'm not this what I think I'm supposed to be and I know in my mind I'm this heel grabbing, you know, liar and sneak and so forth, but you're saying I'm something else, and come on, is that really you telling me this? Is this my own imagination, my own ego? What, what's going on here? So that's Jacob. He's wrestling with this all night long. And he said, I'm not letting you go. I, I'm, not, I'm not quitting until I know something yes. for certain. Right. Until I have a certainty about this, right? Yes. And so he wrestled all night, and he, but he didn't prevail, he, but he held his own. He just wouldn't let go, right? And finally, the angel or this being touched the hollow of his thigh. The hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And the scripture says he, he walked with a limp the rest of his life. Good for the staff, right? Good thing he had the staff. But anyway, his thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. So... All night long, he has this encounter. But this encounter, it leads to a blessing, right? right. The scripture gives... Now, when you read the, this, it's kind of innocuous. In fact, you look at it and you think, what? why? Why, why bother with that? But it says, 
in verse 31, it talks about, okay, after the wrestling match, now he's up, and now he's got to face his brother Esau, and he's still, that's part of the wrestling match, is, um, is he going to kill me? Is he going to kill my wife and all the kids, my wives and kids and so forth? But it says he passed Penuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. So he's trying to, you know, do what he's got to do, and the sun comes up. And that was a divine encounter, right? This thing with the wrestling match all night long. He was wounded as a result of it. And he needed healing. And according to, I just read this in a midrash, I, bought, I, I, I got one of these a few weeks ago, and all it is is just Jewish commentary. It's just trying to make natural sense out of things that we don't understand, so it's not, it's not spooky. It's consistent with the scripture. The Lord miraculously caused the sun to rise. Because what's the sun got to do with anything? The guy's limping. He, he's he's got to face his brother. Why, why would, you know, the sun all of a sudden comes up. It caused the sun to rise prematurely is what they say. Wow. They caused, God caused the sun to rise prematurely on Jacob so that he would be healed before he had to confront his brother Esau. Now, if you're like me, you say, okay, what's the son got to do with that? What's the son got to do with healing him? How could a, an early sunrise make any kind of difference? Why would it bring any special healing to Jacob? Because the Jewish sages say it wasn't any ordinary light. That rose, that, that light that rose up for Jacob was not normal. It wasn't typical. It was what they call or haganus, the primordial divine light of creation that originally lit the world. Hallelujah. Adam and Eve dwelt in that light, in that supernatural yes. light. That was the light that lit them until God hid it because of their sin. Because they failed to fulfill their purpose. Which was to believe God. Which was to say what God said instead of listening to the devil stealing the word from him. And the Jewish tradition also connects this special light with Jesus, with the Messiah. And the scripture says, and God saw the light that it was good, right? In Genesis 1. And the scripture says it. And they're, what, what they're saying is that this is teaching that God foresaw the Messiah. And we know he was before the foundation of the world, right? But this is validating that in their mind, that God saw the Messiah and his works even before the creation of the world, before there was anything. And it's even taught that the name of Messiah is connected to the continued existence of the Son and to light itself. And you know what they say, once God spoke light, it has never stopped. I think I mentioned that briefly last week. It travels at the speed of light. The universe is continuing to expand because of it. Nothing has ever stopped. It's continued to grow and grow and grow and it will until God changes it. Once he spoke it, it it didn't just go for a certain amount of time. Once he spoke light, the light just keeps on going, right? Look at Psalm 72, uh, verse 4 through 7. Psalm 72, 4 through 7. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. In his days shall the righteous flourish in abundance of peace so long as the moon endureth. Verse 17. And the moon is just a reflection of the light. The sun, right? His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun. And men shall be blessed in him as all nations shall call him blessed. Praise the Lord. So they say the light is his name, right? Yes. For it is written, the light dwelleth with him. 
Praise the Lord. It's a part of him. Amen. Daniel uh, 2.22 talks about that. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. Yes. Praise the Lord. And the New Testament writers agreed. They, they didn't have the New Testament. They're drawing from all those Old Testament writings in order to make the New Testament. It's not going to contradict it. It's going to enhance it. It's going to expand it. Amen. So look at John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. In him was life, and life was the light of men. Praise the Lord. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. What were the rabbis there for? What, what was the, the Jewish religion for? To reveal God to man. That was their purpose. That was their light. But they were in darkness. Because they had made it about us and everybody else right. is no good. Right. It, unfulfilled purpose. They were, they were in darkness. Yeah. That's why the light had to come. Yeah. The light came, but the darkness wouldn't receive it. The darkness couldn't comprehend it. Verse 9. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world, that gives purpose to every human being. Yes. Glory. All they need is light, yep. no matter how dark they might seem. That's what the, 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 Tim's talking about, the thief on the cross. Yeah. He sees the light. And all he's experienced is darkness. Yeah. And in one brief minute, Jesus gives him light. Yeah. And his purpose is fulfilled Hallelujah. to ultimately be reunited with God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's why a person's, it's not over till it's over. Right. There's always a chance for light to shine. Right. For that light to come to somebody. Yeah. No matter how dark the moment is that they happen to find themselves in. Praise the Lord. That was the true light. John 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Again, he's the word of God. That's how we follow him is by his word. Revelation 21, verse 23. And the city had no need of sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is yes. the light thereof. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now the point in all of this is that Jesus is the source. Yes. He's, he's this special light we're talking about. Amen. Yes. And the one who brought it again. Amen. During his time on earth, when he came to the earth, that's what he's telling us. Even though he spoke this light into existence initially, darkness came because of man's sin. Now he's bringing that light back. That creative light is coming again, and it came while he walked the, the earth again, amen, as the Messiah, as Jesus. So everybody, the, the point was so that everyone could experience God's divine light again. So everybody could find healing. So that everybody could have blessings. So that everybody could, could be just like Jacob was. Amen? So that everybody could get blessed. Yes. So that the light could bless them and heal them and deliver them and bring to them everything yes. that they lacked. Yes. Right. Everywhere there was darkness in their life. Right. Matthew 5, 14. You're the light of the world. Uh-oh. The buck's been dropped. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Right. Amen. Right. We, what he's saying is simply this. You have a purpose to be fulfilled. Yes. You can say, I don't know what my purpose is. Well, it's walking in the light. Yes. Yes. 
just like Jesus, to be light to this world, to bring healing, to bring blessing. That's all he was doing with the, with the disciples. When the Holy Spirit came, what did it come? That was a rushing mighty wind, but it was tongues of fire. Why? So that people would find their purpose again. Why? And what did they do? They went about doing their purpose. Yes. What light does, it creates, it heals, it delivers, it breaks bondages, it set captives free. It does what Jesus did when he came to the world. Yes. And you think, well, I don't know what my, your purpose might be Kmart and somebody in the aisle. That you see limping and you just say, could I pray for you? Yeah. Jesus loves you. It's light. It may not be a, you know, solar blast, but it's light. It's bringing light to somebody. It's, and it's fulfilling your purpose as it brings purpose to them at the same time. Yeah. Our lives are so much more valuable. I know we're screwed up. I know I'm screwed up. Yeah. You don't have to tell me. I don't listen anyhow. It doesn't matter to me. Because I know there's somebody talking to me that's bigger. The voice is greater than all the other voices that I hear. In spite of me, it's saying you got a purpose. You are light. You can be light. Yes, And I'm not going to let somebody else tell me I'm darkness. Praise the Lord. We're to bring blessing wherever we can. Matthew 2, verse 9. See, we can't, we can't judge. We can't criticize. We can't find fault. We can't, it doesn't do us any good. It doesn't change anything. It really doesn't even make us feel any better. It doesn't. It just creates more darkness. It's hard to not let darkness come out sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you just can't say anything. Because you know, right now, yeah. I'm full of darkness. Yeah. And if I open my mouth, it's going to get really dark in here in a hurry. Yeah. Right? Unless I can get to the light. Yes. Right. Praise the Lord. Sometimes being light is the hardest thing in the world. Yes. Because our natural proclivity is to go to the dark. It's the easy way. Yes. Praise the Lord. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them it, till it came and stood over where the young child was. Yes. But maybe it wasn't a star. The Hebrew word for star is kokav, and it translates radiance or glory. So the word that we always translate through the Greek, coming back around as star, may have just been the glory. They were following the Shekinah glory of God until it came to a specific place. Think about this. How much easier would it have been for that Shekinah glory to just hover right over the light of the world? Yes. Right over God himself yes. in the flesh. The wise men found Jesus. They didn't find him by a star. They found him by the Shekinah glory of God because it couldn't be separated. God's manifest presence. God was in him. Let me give you a couple of examples real quick. Matthew 12, verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Now, here's the phrase, the Spirit of God. Right. Yes. The kingdom, the Holy Ghost, I talked about this last week, it encompasses the kingdom. The kingdom is God's presence. Right? right? So they're inseparable. Yeah. The king's domain is evidenced by his work. So when the kingdom of God comes on somebody... Powers of darkness are forced to leave. Yes. 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 So keep oil in your lamp, right? right. 
That's the Holy Spirit. That's all he's talking about is stay, stay filled. How do you stay filled? By staying in the word, by praying, by communicating with God. How many of you know, when you turn on the light, the darkness flees? I know because I stumble around in the dark every morning until I turn on the light. Yep. Right? When I turn on the light, all of a sudden, the darkness is gone. Yep. Except where the light isn't. Right. Amen? Light doesn't, or I, let me say it this way. The darkness doesn't resist. It flees. Right. It, it can't do anything with light except go. Yeah. It, just has to, it has to be gone. It just has to disappear. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 5, 12 through 15. Now this is a story, and you don't even have to go there. I can tell you because everybody knows it anyway. Peter and the other disciples, they've received the Holy Spirit, and they're walking along, and people are getting healed. The scripture says by his shadow. Yes. Yes. And so we're all wanting uh, that shadow. Well, the truth is, if there's a shadow, there has to be light. Right? I mean, you can't have a shadow in the dark. There has to be some light. And the other thing is, there's no substance to a shadow. We didn't know that when we were kids. That's why we were freaked out all the time by the little, you know, whatever, things we did or, or just a tree blowing outside and yeah. moonlight and it turns into a some horrible monster on the wall of your bedroom it's a shadow it doesn't have any substance if you get up and turn the light on it's gone if you don't get up and you just touch it all you're touching is the wall it's yeah. it's not there it has no substance peter was overshadowed by the holy spirit by the holy ghost the light of the presence of god is what brought the miracles yes. Yes. amen the shekinah glory of god produced what only god can do light heals, it delivers, it yes. blesses, it brings creative force. Yes. Hallelujah. Isaiah 9, 2. Praise the Lord. I'm going to skip through some stuff just to get to the end because it's we're getting late. Isaiah 9, 2 says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. He's just prophesying yes. of what's coming. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Second Peter 1, 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Watch this. Whereunto ye do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Yeah. Until the day dawn and the day star, the Shekinah glory, yeah. amen, arise in your hearts. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He's saying glory is wanting to rise up in you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Christ in you is that what he said, the hope of glory. The hope of that light being manifest. And the hope of, of you becoming the light. Yes. Of you producing the fulfillment of your purpose. Mm. Praise the Lord. I, I'm just going to quit here. But let me just wrap up with this. Adam was created as a being of light. And he fell into darkness. Because of sin. Because of not agreeing with God, what God had actually said by deviating from what the Word of God said. Amen? Amen. Acts chapter 26, uh, 15 through 18. Jesus went into the temple and they were selling and buying and trading and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. No, well, this, is, that, that's, this is Paul knocked off his horse and he sees the light and gets a revelation. He's blinded by it because he's in darkness and so on and so forth. And we know he was in darkness even though he had all kinds of truth because he, had, he was a great scholar. But he didn't have light Amen. to enlighten that truth that he had. But uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to really go there, but he was not fulfilling his purpose, right. which is why he ended up blinded for three days until he got the truth of God's word, amen, uh, being the light, because he wasn't fulfilling. He had a purpose. 
He thought he knew what his purpose was. But it wasn't killing Christians. Even though he thought that was his purpose. He was in darkness. God had to reveal to him what his purpose was. And he did that by light. And that light fulfilled his purpose. And now he becomes the writer of two-thirds of the New Testament and so many other miraculous things that he did. Amen? But then in, in uh, I, we won't have to go there, but in Matthew 21, it talks about where I was going, th- thought I was going to there. And that is where Jesus walks into the temple and they're in there doing, you know, all kinds of heinous crap. They're, they're taking crippled animals and selling them for yeah. sacrifices. They're, they're buying stuff uh, really cheap and then selling it really expensively uh, at high cost. They're trading money for uh, church, uh, for the, uh, s- the temple money had to have their own currency. And so they were ex- you know, uh, use an extreme exchange amounts uh, in order for you to get money because you couldn't use regular currency in the temple. You had to have their currency, and so they were using a, a real high rate of exchange so that they could make even more money. They were thieves. They were just a bunch of crooks. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus walked into that p- temple, and he said, you've made this place a den of thieves. And what he was saying to him was, you have, made, you have darkened the temple of God. Yes. You have made it evil. You have desecrated God's temple. Yes. Amen. We are the temple of God. Yes. I'm not putting condemnation on you. I'm just saying we can bring darkness to the temple simply by not operating in agreement with God's word. Right. Praise the Lord. It's not, it's not, you know, you're going to hell now. That's not it. And we know that. We're, that's, that's settled. It's a purpose. It's the reason. What was the temple there for? To bring people to God. Right. To, to give them forgiveness. To get sacrifices for their sins. To, to give them access to God. Right. And they weren't doing it. Praise. Praise the Lord. We're the temple of God. And Jesus comes to us and he consecrates us. He sets us aside for a specific purpose. Each one of us. To bring light. He fills us with glory. He said, I am the light of the world. If you don't follow me, you're walking in darkness. We walk with the light of his presence. Amen. Amen. Remember uh, Ahab, Elijah, there's the problem. Here's the guy creating all the trouble for Israel. And what does Elijah do? He said, no, I'm not the problem. You're the problem. I'm the light. I'm what fixes the problem. Praise the Lord. We've got to stand for God. That's what, that's what God is telling us in all of the, what I'm saying is we have to stop worrying about hurting somebody's feelings. They don't care about hurting your feelings. They're not, they're not concerned about letting you know that you're some kind of weirdo and a nutcase when you're the, one that, the only one that has any light. Hallelujah. And if we don't let our light shine, these morons are going to continue in darkness until they're totally deceived, until they are destroyed. Yes. Right. And that's not the will of God. He, it's not His will that any should perish. Right. So we're going to have to get bold enough and be willing to risk a little uh, smart mouth from some moron who doesn't know anything in order to shed some light, in order to give some light. You, you're the problem. Listen, isn't that what we're hearing all the time? Yes. It, you're the problems because you won't do this or you won't do that. And, and you want to, you know, hey, they took prayer out of school. They took the Bible out of it. They took uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. They've taken down Christmas. So now you've got to call it the winter holiday. You can't even call it Christmas anymore in most places. They won't let you put up decorations if they have any reference to the cross or to Jesus himself. It just has to be some, you know, culturally bland kind of celebration that we have, you know, so everybody can have a turkey and get some gifts. They've done it over and over and over in every area. And we, and we have said, okay, well, we want to get along. And we're not, you know, we're, we're Christians and we don't want to create problems. We're past that church. It's time for us to start being Elijah's and start saying, you're the problem. We're not the problem. We got the answer. You just need to open up so that we can give it to you. Now, if you don't want it, bye-bye. But I'm offering it to you. I'm, ready. I'm here to give you light. If you love the darkness so much, you want to stay in it. Have at it. That's what Jesus did, isn't it? He said, I came and gave you light, but you preferred the darkness. 
if you want. But we don't know who they are that prefer the darkness. Some of them are just in the darkness because they're ignorant, because they haven't ever been exposed to the light. Yes, true. Praise the Lord. Let there be light. So we got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the whole thing with the lamps, you know, and we are the light of the world. But in order to be that light, we've got to be full of oil. We've got to have our lamps full. So that means we've got to be in the Word and we've got to be doing a little praying. I'm not, I'm not telling you you've got to go on a 30-day fast. I'm not telling you you've got to pray three hours a day. I'm saying however you're led, whatever, whatever you can do, you should do. And that's between you and God. And I, I, nobody's going to judge you. Not even God is going to judge you. It's for your benefit. Yes. Amen. This world is in darkness. Yes. We got a mess. And anybody that doesn't know that is in greater darkness than I thought. Praise the Lord. We cannot just, you know, keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're supposed to shine. That's what light does. I'm going to skip the scriptures for the sake of time. But the darker it gets, the brighter we are. Yes, yes. yes we are. True story. And let me, this is what kind of saying what I just said. Lights are not reactive. Lights are proactive. We've been reactive far too long. That's why the world's in the mess that it's in. When, I mean, had we known, had our parents known, you know, probably. Not all of our parents were, you know, really religious people or, or were connected to the Bible. But if they were, even the ones that were didn't, because of the culture of the time, when they started saying, well, we're not going to have the Pledge of Allegiance, they just thought, well, you know, okay, we'll do it at home or they can do it at the ball games, or we'll do it somewhere else. And, and you know, and when they wouldn't let you pray in church or, or use the Word of God in church anymore, they thought, well, well, they'll get it at Sunday school. It's okay. The, uh, the Bible school in the summertime. And you know, and, we, and I pray with them at night before they go to bed. So, and you know what I'm saying? They, it wasn't like they just threw their hands up and said, oh, my God, they're taking it all away from us and there's nothing we can do. They just thought it's no big deal because the culture was so permeated with Christianity that those things didn't seem like they were going to be that big of a deal. But that's the devil. A little bit here, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then all of a sudden you wake up one day and it's 2021 and, and we're all alone and there is nothing that you know, reflects Christianity in this world anymore. And we're talking about the United States of America, one nation under God in whom we trust, amen, and is absent here. Imagine then what it must be in the nations of the world where there never was that, you know, that, that uh, connection. Where they never had a covenant, where their forefathers didn't come to God and say, come on, we want this to be a nation of God's people. We want to we want to have this be a nation of the gospel and a, a place where the gospel can be preached and where it can be spread throughout the world. Yeah. It's the only reason why we've been a blessed nation. It isn't because we had so much other stuff or because we were that much brighter than anybody else. Right. It was because of the light. We are to act on the light, not wait for the darkness, not react to the darkness, act on the light that's in us. We're supposed to be that star, if you want to use that terminology that they tried to use in the New Testament about Jesus. We are to be that Shekinah glory. We're supposed to be the light of God yes. in this earth. Light be. Just like in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Yes. God saw light. He said it was good. Yes. We're not of the darkness, no, no. but the light. No. We are created beings of light. We were born from above. Yes. We were born from the light. Yes, Lord. So we need to walk in the light. We need to speak light. And the frequency of that light will create or manifest God's word and it will feel, fulfill his purpose. Yes. It really will. We, we're trying to figure out, okay, just by saying this, how does it work? Listen, 
I'm telling you, there's science behind this. We, we don't have to understand it. We just got to know God made it clear, simple enough for us to understand without having a PhD in physics. Yes, this thing will move atoms. It'll rearrange molecules. Yes. It'll create yes. universes. It'll create yes. whole new realities yes. if we'll just walk in that light as he is in the light. Yes. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. It's not a time to be afraid. This is a time to be bold. The bolder we are, the bigger our God is. The brighter the light shines. Amen. And the more the darkness wants to flee. It, doesn't, it ain't going to stand up and fight with you. It'll run. Like the devil run from Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have the, we have the victory. We, it's a done deal. It's just a question of we're just playing out the timeline. We're just acting out the timeline. That's all this is. And I want to be... I want to do that. I want to experience it. I don't want to just get to heaven. I want to get to heaven, but that's already done as far as I'm concerned. I'm just, now, I want, to, I want to experience some of this here and now. I, I want to, man, I want to, when, you know what? I just want to be a bad for God. Amen. Fill in the blanks, y'all. Praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, we've, been our, we've had our darkness. We've had our time of dark. I want to be light now. I want, to, I want to make a difference where the light shines. Hallelujah. That's what he's called us to, and he'll make it possible. He's equipped us and given us the authority to do it. So God bless you all in Jesus' name. Let your light shine this week. Praise God. Praise the Lord.